welcome to the Investor News. In this video, Doug Casey talks about the dollar, gold, and Bitcoin. Listen to what he has to say. You said that the dollar will be inflated out of existence. So the logical follow-up to that is, well, what's going to replace the dollar? So you mentioned mm. gold. What about, what about cryptocurrencies? What about Bitcoin? A lot of people are saying it's the new gold. Well, what do you think? Uh, I was a late adopter to cryptocurrency. I was given a physical Bitcoin uh, when I, I bought a Belgian friend of mine a, a meal. A physical and, Bitcoin? What is that? <laughs> well, they actually exist. They actually they actually exist, and it has the codes printed. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, all right. Okay. All right. Yeah, so it's kind of a collector's item. I've still got sure. it in my safe deposit box, but if I wanted to put it online, I could collect forty thousand dollars or whatever it's worth today. So yeah, all right. Um, that was at thirteen dollars. But I didn't get into uh, a Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I was look. I'm very favorably inclined towards Bitcoin because what is money? Okay, there are char there are five characteristics of money that Aristotle defined in the fourth century BC. They were valid then. They're still valid now. It's got to be durable, divisible, convenient, consistent. Bitcoin is all of those things, just as gold is. Uh, but uh, I was wondering about, well, what's the value proposition? I mean, how do you get from, how do you keep from getting stuck holding the bag with a digital nothing? Which is isn't what the value is. proposition exactly what you just said? The four properties of money. I mean, what's the value proposition of gold besides industrial use? Well, right, the value. That, that's correct. It does have a use value, other than as money itself. It's used as you know, gold, people forget, is the most, uh, 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 it's not the most reflective, that's silver. Uh, it's, it's, it's not the most conductive, that's silver. It's very close to that, though. But it, it is the most durable, it's the most non-reactive of all naturally occurring elements. And uh, that gives it increasing industrial uses, but they're, but they're trivial by comparison to its use as money. Uh, the value proposition for Bitcoin is that it's a, a very portable and transferable form of wealth. In other words, uh, gold has disadvantages. You have some, you got to cross a border with it and you've got to store it. I mean, Bitcoin is a way to cro cross borders easily. Most people don't realize that three quarters of the people on this planet lived in blocked currency countries where your um, your your quacha or your Pula or your dirham or all these crazy currencies, they're worth absolutely zero outside of the geographical place sure. that issues. But with a smartphone and a Bitcoin, you can go anywhere. So that's the real value proposition for Bitcoin. Also, its supply is limited. I'm bullish on Bitcoin. I don't know how bullish because, mm -hmm. listen, it's already, well, look, we can talk about What's well, the value? Who knows, who knows how high it could go or how low, but uh, I'm just wondering whether or not you think it's a contender for replacing the dollar like gold is. You mentioned that gold, we could see a return to, uh, you know, gold is money, otherwise potentially known as a gold standard. Uh, yeah. Could we potentially see a Bitcoin standard as well? Well, it's already happened in El Salvador. Sure. The current, the current president of El Salvador, well, by the name of Bukele, uh, El Salvador, incidentally, is one of the countries in the world that uses the dollar as its de jure, not just its de facto currency. I don't have a national currency. That's right. Uh, so now they're using Bitcoin. Okay. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Okay, uh, and the U.S. is uh, very, very unhappy with that. Very, very unhappy with that. Just as they were very unhappy when uh, Saddam Hussein and uh, Muammar Gaddafi were making motions to uh, to use gold um, as money in some form in those countries. So I don't think the Bukele will last. I think the U.S. is going to replace him because he's using Bitcoin as as money. But uh, mm. sure, it can work because the world is digital, everybody's got a smartphone. Now, the one thing that I don't want to see happen, and nobody should want to see happen, is a central bank digital currency where the US government says, well, let's digitize the dollar. We'll give you an account with the Fed. But at that point, you'll be like Will Smith 
in that movie, uh, Enemy of the State, where everything that you own is, is basically been, can be locked down and confiscated, as the Canadian truckers have recently found and the people have contributed to them. So uh, there's a reason why money uh, should be private and private ties. It shouldn't even be a function of the state, quite frankly. And this is a this is a very bad idea. That's that's why I like gold for money, because you, you don't rely on the state. It's actually <clears throat> owning gold is actually a bet on the stupidity of government, which is a for the long term is always a good bet. Well, somebody needs to standardize the unit of account. If we have just 50 different states and 350, 400 million people making their own currency, we're going to have God knows how many different currencies and units of account. Uh, the economy would be almost impossible to operate under such conditions. Which not you need you need some sort of governing body to say, all right, here's one standardized currency. I mean, we're, we're, I'm getting philosophical here, but I'm just I understand. Amusing. No, and this is a very reasonable argument. But uh, if everyone used gold. Okay. Uh, and they probably use either grams or ounces of gold. Well, there, there you have it. I mean, you don't need the government to uh, to designate that, okay. because in today's world we've got uh, 200 different world currencies. I mean, okay, so you might have people, some people issuing gold in this form, some in, in that form. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing, nothing wrong or different about that. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3,000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.